Series 3 of the Sewing Connection. On the edge of this one layer coat we were making last time, there are so many possibilities that are really fun for finishing the edges. Let's consider the alternatives. Now, our time ran out last time and I hadn't finished this ultra suede buttonhole, so I better show you how to do that. I had fused a little patch on both sides. The underside is just a little bit larger than the front side so that you make sure you hit the stitching. And in between last time and this time, I already stitched that outer edge just to hurry it along a little bit. So now what we need to do is mark the size of the button so that we have just the right one there and make a little buttonhole. Now this is really an easy use of these synthetic suede to make buttonholes. And uh, you just start on one end, and again, I'm using a straight stitch foot here. You might use instead, if you prefer it, and I'll back up there. You might use instead a uh, Teflon foot. Whatever works best on your machine and with your capabilities is what you always use. So I have the needle down position, which ensures that it will stop when I want it to and I'm coming back. I'm just stitching a rectangle here right in the middle is what I'm doing and I'll go slow when I get to the corner and turn that and make two stitches and back stitch them and I am through stitching. Then what I still need to do is trim off the threads and slash that buttonhole open and this is one of the beauties. You can actually do this. Just take a craft knife and slash right down the center of this and do it with the greatest of care because you don't want to go too far. And In fact, it might be a good idea to put a pin at the other end so that you don't go too far and you have a buttonhole. It's that easy. So that's one of the choices that you can make for a buttonhole. And then let's quickly sew on a button also because we uh, better check into that. What I've done here also to hurry it along is reinforce it on the back side. This is a little piece of uh, interfaced fabric so that it really doesn't show much, but uh, we better have it there in order to sew on a button. And then to do that, I'll just take the foot off this machine. And when you have this one layer, don't put too much strain anywhere if you can possibly avoid it. So I'm also going to use this little button lift. And what it will do is I stitch this on is to uh, put a little space under the button so that it won't, and I'll put it right over the area where I want it. I'm just going to put the needle in before I remove the pin. Okay, here we go. And then I'm ready to stitch. And I want to use that little lift under it just to make sure that I put a shank on that so that it won't pull so tightly so that there won't be so much strain. So we'll go ahead and stitch this on and give one, oh, about six, seven, eight times maybe. And then I'll stop and do the back one. And when that one's done, we are finished. We have the button ready to go. Let's see if it goes down in the right place, which it does. And tie it off, and we're through. So you just cut everything off short, and it's finished. And there is a little shank there, and everything's perfectly safe. Now let's move to the edge before we uh, go any beyond with this. I'll put my buttonholes and buttons up here so that everything's kind of a little more orderly. And let's do that edge, which is the most fun part of it. There are so many decorative things that you can do and explore all the possibilities on your machines to see what can happen. One of the things I'm going to do over on the serger, I'll just do that first. This is really fun. It's flat locking. I've already set the serger for that so that uh, it's ready to go. Three different threads there. A decorative thread on the upper looper is what you always do for this type of flat locking. So I have here some variegated pearl cotton. And as I do this stitching through it, what's going to happen, of course, is that it will make that nice little decorative edge. It almost looks like a fold over braid on it. So here we go. You can see this would be really fast to do a whole big edge. This is nice on a jacket. Uh, instead of using this pearl cotton, you might use ribbon floss. Or if this is going to be something a little bit dressy, think of using a uh, candlelight or one of the uh, metallic threads instead. And that might be real pretty uh, to give a little glittery touch to it. 
So flat locking, that's an easy method, something that you can do if you have the serger. If you don't, well, there are a whole lot of other things that you can use instead, so really won't matter that much. I have, uh, I'll do the easiest on the edge first, I guess. I'll just get up here and show you one that involves no sewing at all. This one is a copy of something that a famous uh, retailer around the nation, I won't name names, has done. And this is just a fun coat, all this fringy stuff. This is to wear over pants. And what has been done with this fringe is simply this whole collar was put on. And after it was all finished, I left a little piece here that I didn't cut. It's this easy. Now this is polar fleece, which is a knit fabric instead of a woven one. So nothing is going to ravel. And this is how you then would treat this coat to have an exact duplicate of that one that you see, uh, as I said, from a famous retailer, a prestige store, but it's a fun coat. You can use one of these loops on the bottom to form a buttonhole if you want to and put a button there and actually fasten it instead of just having it hooked like this. Put this over here to get it out of the way and we'll get back to some of those edging things that you might do on the machine. I'm going to uh, do a little bit here first with this foot, I guess, since I have it here handy. And what this foot is, is a, a piping foot. Maybe I better let you see this first. Uh, there, it's a wide braid foot. You can put piping, braids, pearls, whatever you want to through that hole that's there in the center. And with this foot, I can use some kind of heavy cords and do some nice things with them. Here I've already done a couple of samples in pearl and in silver and in this uh, pink. I'll just put one of those through to show you how it does work. And for this, a good stitch to use so that it gets caught. But uh, let's see, I'll put this on the edge. Okay. A good stitch to use here is a blind hem stitch. So I'll get that stitch going and uh, get all this thread through here. And what I want to do with that blind hem stitch is to stitch, I'll push the little button here, and I want to stitch mostly on the, I have a fold over edge here. I have already on the iron pressed over a fold here so that I, there's the raw edge, it's over there. And what I'm doing here is covering up that raw edge so that it does look nice. So as I sew this, you can see it's going to sew right next to this cord. And then about every five stitches, it goes over and covers the cord and comes back again. So you simply need to guide this so that it does keep it covered up. You probably have with your machine a little edge guide that you can use. Uh, it's one that attaches to the machine and it holds the cording out here. So that makes it a little bit easier for you. But this makes a pretty edge and it's very quick, very easy. It covers up the raw edge and holds it securely. So one little thought, one idea. I'll move some of these out of the way so that I can put these other ones up here and have them in place instead. But that would also work with any kind of cording, pearls, uh, whatever is appropriate for your particular garment. Some fold over braid works well also. And that fold over braid might be anything from ultra suede or it might be commercial braids, various things on the market. I have some of these back here that are done on uh, boiled wool jackets. Austrian jackets. This one, I'll just show you these briefly and put them back on the rack. This one has that flat lock edge, but in a very similar fabric. So here's the flat lock edge around the edge of this vest, but a very heavy wool, and it works very well on that. Here is one that has a braid that does not fold over. On this one, it's just a flat braid, and it's been just stitched straight along the edge every place. But this is another way to very nicely cover that edge. Here's a ribbon on this next one. And this little narrow ribbon, there are uh, millions of gorgeous ribbons in the trim departments that you might want to explore. But this little ribbon is also sewn on with a, maybe a slight zigzag if you have any chance of raveling at all in the fabric. But if not, just straight stitch it on both sides of the ribbon. And this works well. Those little narrow ribbons, you can uh, press in a curve if you want to even. So it's quite easy to do. Another here does have the fold over braid. In fact, both of these have the fold over braid. 
and this is what I'm going to show you how to do. But they work so well, not only on the Austrian, the boiled wool jackets, but they also work very well on a big coat as I have here in front. This fold-over braid is of two varieties, and one variety that I have just needs a single operation to sew the whole thing on. So this lighter pink one that I have here, I can sew on, just straight stitch it on. Or if you want to make sure that you catch both sides, you can zigzag a little bit. So I'll take off this foot and put on a zigzag foot, a multi-purpose foot, so that it can do anything. And I'll put that on zigzag. And uh, this is just the raw edge of the coat. Now, I don't have anything at all here folded over. It's just the raw edge and this braid is going to cover it. And you just stop every inch or two as you go along and fold it before you continue. So I'm going to do just a straight stitch here. I am not. I already pushed the zigzag, and I find I don't need it. This is going to be easy to do with a straight stitch, so I'll put it back on straight. Take out the pins before you come to them, for goodness sake. I think I can use a bigger stitch because all this is kind of heavy, so I just pushed to get a bigger stitch. I am holding it out here and I'm kind of adjusting it with my finger as I go along because I want to both keep that uh, trim taut, I want to keep it tightly pulled here, but also I'm, uh, so that's why I'm pulling here with my back hand, but also I want to just adjust wherever possible or wherever necessary as I go along. This is a very fast one and it's especially fast when you do it in the same color thread so it wouldn't even show up if you did get slightly crooked, but it's very sturdy. This other edge that I have here almost uh, is the same color as the coat. It's very close, and it's wide enough, and it's a good idea with this that you don't do it in just one operation because the underside is shorter. So because of this, we're going to have to do it in two operations. We would first sew on the underside with that side up so that I can see what I'm doing, and after we have this side sewn on, and I'll just do a little bit of this, after this side is sewn on, then we'd flip it and do the other side. And the top side, of course, then will cover what we formerly have done, and this will extend over beyond. So these wider braids usually do take two steps. That still doesn't take a whole lot of time because you don't have that many edges on the coat. You only have, uh, as opposed to the seams, the edges are a lot faster to do. So you can see on the back side here where my stitching is, and it didn't quite hit, which it wasn't supposed to. That's why it's two-step. So that's one way. Another way, besides buying those commercial uh, suede's might be to make, or braids might be to make your own, and this is a synthetic suede that I have here, and I'm going to use this by having it almost in half, but the longer side should be a little bit, or the underside should be just a little bit longer than the upper side. It, that way it makes sure that you catch both sides. So what I would do is just go ahead and stitch this. There's no sense in pressing it because it isn't easy to press this. So just stitch it, and as you go along, go ahead and make the fold wherever you need to there on the edge. And after you have a whole big length of this done, then it's time to insert this over the raw edge of your coat and with it sandwiched in between these two layers of the suede. I can then put this in the machine and go ahead and edge stitch this. And this holds just as securely then as the commercial braid. So another alternative. I'm only going to show you maybe a dozen ways. I'm sure that you can think up about two dozen more on your own. Here is some of the decorative ribbon that you can buy. This is not as narrow as that that you saw on the Austrian wool. I already tried to press this in a curve, and I did a little bit. So if you have curves around the edge of a collar or something, it would be easy enough to do. Any wider than this, you can't press in a curve. But I've just pressed, or just stitched this flat to one side. I would then have to take it to the ironing board fold it over, and do a little pressing here to get it flat before I edge stitch the other side of the ribbon down to the coat. But here's where I had tried before to see if I could curve it, and I really can. You just sort of pull it around in a curve as you go, and you really can get a curve in if you need to. So with this one, again, once it's pressed in place, just a matter of stitching it. And 
change the thread so it's the same color. I'm just working with contrast in all these so that you can see what it looks like because you couldn't see it too easily if I did it in the same color. So another alternative here. Oh, I guess I tucked these out of place. Should have left them here in case you want to see them all. I'm going to get a, just a big bunch of mess here, but there. Okay, here's one that I kind of liked, and what this involved was fusing. And I don't know that I'll take the time for it right now because our time will run out, I'm afraid, and we won't get finished with all of them. But what I did was take a layer of suede that was wider, and I put some fusible on it and peeled off the uh, release sheet. And then I folded this about in half over the edge, of uh, over a raw edge, and I set it on a decorative stitch. And what that decorative stitch was, was this little scallop. And with that scallop, after that was all stitched, then it's just a matter of taking your scissors and trimming off the extra here that you do not want. So here's another one that uh, you can all do successfully. Now, whether it's this scallop or whatever the decorative stitch is that you want to try on yours, there are all sorts of possibilities. So see what you can do with that decorative stitch. I kind of like that, come to think of it. After I got this coat all finished, I thought, oh, several of my other samples, perhaps I like better. It's however it hits you the particular day you're doing it. Maybe it would be a good idea to back away from it and wait a day before you put that edge on to make sure that you have whatever it is you want. Another edge that's uh, over here on this side is, because this ravels so nicely, I thought, why not just ravel out some of this? And after a little bit of this is raveled off one side, then we can cut this and uh, cut a strip of it, which I've done here. And I would also ravel this strip. Now, this strip that I have here is folded in half, and I'm just fringing some more off this. And after we fringe enough, it could use more fringing still, but after we fringe enough, it's a matter then of putting it down on the machine and doing a little stitching right on this fold or right close to the fold and then you'd have all three layers of this to fringe if you wanted to and that might be very pretty on some of these. I'm not going to stitch quite on the edge to get it flatter. I'm going to stitch in a little bit because it's rather bulky. So I'll come in here just a little bit. And this is another edge that makes it quite nicely really. A little bit bulky but that would be appropriate on a coat that you want for, oh, cool weather, and uh, a little bulk there isn't going to hurt anything. Here's a fun one. With this one, I have used a whole lot of colors of pearl cotton, just colors that I kind of like the way they blended with this outside fabric. And with this pearl cotton, I uh, threaded all this into the... Uh, seven hole braiding foot, I believe is what this is called. Look through your feet to see what marvelous things you might have that you can use. And I used uh, this little needle threader to pull all those threads through. And then once I have them pulled through this foot, it's just a matter of putting it on the machine and pushing any kind of a decorative stitch. It doesn't matter what it is you push. What will I push? Here's a good one. Okay, I'm going to push, put this on the machine then and show you how nicely this goes. Now, what I like about these feet, and they're available, they don't come with your machine, most of these unusual feet. They're available. You have to go to your dealer and ask about them. But I don't have to straighten out all these cords. They're all mixed up right now. They're all twisted. The foot will straighten it out for me as it stitches along. So I'm just doing a decorative stitch here, and we'll let it do its thing. And See how it works out. This is doing sort of a honeycomb type design. So we not only have the design of the thread on top, but we also have all of those, and I should have dialed it a little bit wider. It didn't catch a couple of these, which is all right. I'm just trying this on a sample, so it doesn't matter. After I've tried this on a sample and it didn't turn out quite perfectly, then I know that the next time I do it, dial a little bit wider before I do it on my coat and I wouldn't have a problem about it. So another choice. Here's one that I really thought was fun, and this is in that polar fleece that I cut with scissors that I made that big fringe all the way around. 
This is the same polar fleece, but a different color. And what I'm going to do for this is put my multipurpose foot back on the machine. And with this foot in place, I'm going to change cassettes because I want a different design than what I already have here. So I'll just put in a different cassette because I found a design that worked out really well with this. And what that design was, was this. So let's see what this one looks like. These edges, when you have to do some edges, give you a good opportunity to try all those stitches out and all those different feet and all the possibilities on your machine that maybe you don't do very often. But this is a perfect opportunity to do them. I'll just do a couple of these and pull it out so that you can see what it looks like. But this one, I especially like the way it worked out. Okay, well now what we have, it's about time to take this out and show you what it's all about. What we have with this little stitch is uh, a little, um, I should have done this one wider too, so let me show you my original. Here's my original one, and I did push it wider, and the wider stitch looked a lot better. Here I did it narrower, but after it was made all this wide, I then just uh, took my scissors and trimmed up close to that stitch so that that formed a nice edge. Now I can do that on this polar fleece because this does not ravel at all, so it can be done on this. It could not be done, of course, if you had a ravelly fabric here, so be careful about that. So just another edge. Try all those decorative stitches that you have at your disposal and see what you can do with them. And what I then finally arrived at it on this coat is to take some pieces of suede and uh, cut those in with pinking shears and have them come out as they did up there, as you see. Here are a couple of other alternatives, though, while I was playing with it. I thought, how about using two different colors of suede, doing one with a pinked edge, doing one with a straight edge, and stitching these on, and then besides this, also fringing out the edge. I rather like this idea. Um, maybe I should have stuck with this idea because I really do like this now that I look at it again. I decided against it in the first, uh, the first time around. So there's one. Here are some other ideas of maybe just folding it over and uh, stitching that on top. So whatever the stitching is that you do, if I would just put this on, I would take a folded over edge, and this I have pre-pressed so that it is folded over. I'll clear a little of this out of the way. And as I took my edge, what I did was over that raw edge, I just put one layer of suede here and straight stitched on either edge of it so that it would uh, cover nicely. Now on that coat, because I had such a big collar and it was a long coat and uh, there were seams all the way around the edge, there was quite a lot of this to do. So maybe it was on a day when I was feeling a little lazy, I'm not sure, and I thought, I don't want to do anything too complicated to go around such a big distance, so possibly that's why I arrived at such a simple one. Or maybe it was because I checked over my wardrobe and thought, this way it's going to stay more versatile. If you get too elaborate, maybe it narrows down the choices of things that you can wear it with. So consider all the possibilities and come up with the best choice for you. Now notice on this and notice on the collar, that I am using the wrong side. The rest of the coat is all right side, but because this is all one layer, this huge shawl collar is going to be folded over like this, and that's the wrong side. So I also had to think in doing this edge, what's the best thing, because this edge is on the wrong side. When I wear it in cold weather, I would uh, button this way up here around the neck, so it isn't always going to be open like this as it is in slightly warmer weather. Uh, because of that, because it's all going to be closed, I had to have it looking good on both sides. So that's another reason I chose this very simple uh, edging that I have here. As uh, I take it off the hanger, because I think I'll try it on and see what it looks like, notice how I have shoulder pads attached to that hanger. Do either put shoulder pads on a hanger or else perhaps uh, use a padded hanger so that this won't happen. But you can see all of these seams everywhere are covered. All the edges are covered. And I'm going to put it on then and see what it looks like. Finish it up.
give a twirl in front of the mirror and see what it looks like. And as I look in the mirror, I can't believe how huge this lap over looks in one layer. It was wonderful on the pattern that wasn't intended for one layer. Well, the rest of the coat seems just fine. It's just this big lap over in front that I don't like at all. So, what would happen if nothing is ever a complete loss? What would happen if, instead of having that big lap over, I'll turn it over and experiment on this side instead. What would happen if I would just cut it off smaller? It lapped over way over this far. I would rather have it lap about this far. So what would happen if I would just take my scissors and about two inches into it, just cut it and make it this much smaller and so on all the way around. It would only take me minutes then to put this edge back on it, to rip it off, put it back on, finish it up. So no problem, we haven't lost anything. But what about making something bigger? This was uh, too large, I made it smaller. What about making it bigger? Even when it's ultra suede, it is possible. And that's what we're gonna do next time. So come join me then to alter the synthetic suede.